Hey, Rive Alive with Harness, and today we're going to be taking a look at part two of our two part series of integrating a vulnerability scanner or a container scanner into your CSD pipeline. Taking a look at the results here stemming from part one, we were able to call a Nexus IQ scan from the Harness CSD pipeline. Jogging your memory, if you're unfamiliar with how the architecture looks, we have an Amazon EC2 instance running CentOS, which is powering Nexus IQ. And also, we have an Amazon EKS cluster, which is a Kubernetes cluster, which we're looking to deploy WebGoat. Let's head back to the Harness application. So if we take a look at our Harness application here, there are a few more moving pieces that we have. The first piece that we added were actually secrets in the Harness Secret Manager. So actually coming out of the application, going to Security, Secrets Management, Encrypted Text. We can see that we have a few items that we added here. So we added the Nexus IQ password and Nexus IQ user. Here it's just going to be admin, admin123. So if we come back to setup and go back to our WebGoat application that we have here, let's take a look at some other things that we did with the scanning of the artifact. If you click on scan artifact, we've actually added a few workflow variables here that so we can actually prompt the user for what the Nexus IQ application ID is. Now, if we take a look at the particular interpret scan results, this is a new one that we've added. So the first thing is interpret scan results. We also add a workflow variable. What is the minimum policy fail violation? So for example, if we have anything greater than a seven, we're going to go ahead and fail this particular deployment. Let's take a look at that shell script. And the shell script is actually available to GitHub for you. So as you can see here, here's our secrets calls that we have. We also wired it in to the previous steps also. Uh, the, how this works is we get the application ID, which is internal to Nexus IQ. Uh, then we have to go about getting a particular report ID for the latest report. And then we go ahead and count the violations. And if we have more than one violation, then we're going to go ahead and exit this particular workflow. In stitching this all together, we also use a harness pipeline. So this is new. So we made one called DevSecOps pipeline here. If we take a look at this three-stage pipeline, it's actually pretty easy to create. So the first thing is we want to scan an artifact. This is the only thing we did in part one. The next thing is we want to interpret the scan. And lastly, we want to deploy WebGoat. If we had additional stages, we can come here and click add a stage. But since we already used all three of our workflows, that doesn't make any sense. Let's go ahead and deploy this now. A couple ways to do that. But if we go to continuous deployment, deployments, Let's start a new deployment. Let's go ahead and select the application we want to run. This is actually a WebGoat application in the pipeline of DevSecOps. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So the only thing here we need to see is select the latest WebGoat tag. And let's say enter the goat. It's a notification to me. And we can take a look at what's actually happening in our particular pipeline here that we just created. Taking a look, we have a three-stage pipeline. First, we're going to scan the artifact. Then we're going to interpret the scan. And then we're going to actually try to deploy web code. So here's the starting the execution now. And the image scanning is starting here. So where's the tar has been cracked open and it's submitting the scan to Nexus IQ. So here we go. So it looks like this particular policy is being executed and soon we'll be going to the interpret scan. So moving over to the in particular interpret scan stage now, we go and take a look at it. This particular interpret scan will actually run through our particular script that we have created uh, to determine how many of these violations are infracting. So let's take a look. The expected result is actually to fail the results here. And just as expected, it looks like it failed. So let's take a look at these results here. As you can see here, there were over 60 severe violations that we had preventing the deployment and just like that, you have actually unsuccessfully deployed WebGoat, which is the expected result. Uh, thanks for taking a look at this particular example. Always, if you want more information, feel free to reach out to our friends at Sonotype or us at Harness. Until next time, cheers, Robbie.